How's it going everyone? It's John again and today I'm going to do a video on MPLS and using MPLS with VRFs. Now let's just do a quick description of what's going on here. As you can see in the very centre we've got the ISP core. This is going to be our provider edge router and our second provider edge router. In the middle we've got our core routers, just a normal provider um, routers. It's going to be P4, P5, 6 and down here we're going to simulate like we're an ISP with two separate customers. Now the kind of purpose for this configuration and setup is to allow for quite unique um, routing to go on. So if you look at the diagrams I've got customer site or rather customer A site 1 here and customer A site 2 these are obviously going to be the same company and similarly customer site customer B site 1 here and customer B site 2 here again these two in the red are the same company now if you've actually been quite um, attentive you'll notice that the IP addressing is a little bit strange if you're not seen this before essentially this has a 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and next to it adjacent you've got the exact same and complete duplicate so what's going on here because ordinarily if you had a connection here on this interface from the router you could not have the same network on a different interface if you tried to configure that the router would tell you that the there's an overlap and you can't do that the reason why we can do that here is because we're using VRFs. Now VRFs, the way to conceptualise this in your mind is to kind of think of it as VLANs for layer 3. It's going to be completely separate. The written table will be specific and particular to this VRF and similarly with this and this and this. So when we go into and do a show IP route on the actual provider edge, the global written table will not actually have these um, written tables, they'll actually have their own separate segmented written tables. So you actually can do this, which basically affords, if a customer wants to use the very popular 192.168.1.0 network, if you as a provider says you can't use that, it's not very flexible, is it? If they want to use that and they want to use that too, how are you going to do it if they're both connected to the same router going into your network? VRS will accomplish that and the, all, the other kind of important point here is this, another kind of issue you've got is how are these routes going to, or rather how are these sites going to exchange routes dynamically through your core network without causing instability. Now, if you can imagine, if you would allow some random, not a random, but maybe a small customer, the mo not the most reputable, not the same way as an ISP where you've got a kind of trust relationship with them, you're kind of swapping in BGP routes and stuff. A small customer, you don't want to give them that kind of access, they could advertise routes into your core network which could cause great instability, that is not good for your network. So how are we going to be able to do that? We'll do that by having a simple setup of this. On the inside of the ISP from router 2 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7, from edge to edge essentially, we're going to use a simple OSPF configuration, that's your normal interior gateway routing protocol. And there'll be nothing fancy there, we'll just use router OSPF, um, process ID of 1. Now, of course, the process IDs don't need to match, but we're just going to use that for the demonstration here. Between these two routers, though, the edge routers, we're going to have a kind of VPN thing going on here. We're going to use BGP just on these two routers. Now, if you're used to just seeing your kind of CCNA style um, EIGRP configuration or OSPF, You'll be thinking, well, how are these going to be pairing as a kind of peer, a peer group? How will the neighbour relationship form? Because they're not connected. You would think when you're configuring your ordinary OSPF EIGRP, this would have to be connected and have a whole sort, a whole kind of amount of uh, specification that you have the same for EIGRP, the same AS number, so on and so forth. Not in BGP. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to provide reachability from the two routers by implementing OSPF so that in this case we're going to have a loopback of 2.2.2.2 .2 on router 2 and a loopback of 7.7.7.7 on router 7. They will be able to reach each other 
via the OSPF protocol, and from that point, because they have reachability, they're just going to uh, perform a kind of exchange through BGP between just them two. From that point, the next part, we're also going to configure a separate instance of OSPF between the customer and the edge, the customer and the edge, and similarly this customer and the edge, and this to the edge. They will both have different um, OSPF instances. Again, they're going to be in separate VRFs, different routing tables. And because of this implementation, this router will be able to dynamically advertise routes to this router, the same company, without being able to see, essentially, the ISP core. If they traced a route through that, they would not see what's going on here. And routes advertised would not be injected into the core. All that's going to happen is, is that the core will be used as a kind of transparent transit zone, which will allow connectivity through it and you can advertise routes throughout and it'll be completely segmented and stable. So that's essentially what we're going to try to accomplish here. And well, with that long introduction, let's try and do it. So the only thing I will say is that already I've configured a basic implementation of IP addressing in the core. That's going to be a 10.0.0.0 slash 30, 10.0.0.4 slash 30, 8, 12, and that's all I've done so far. So let's just, for example, customer A, customer B, there's been no IP configuration on that done yet. I'm going to let you see all of that. Just for times, I just kind of put the IP addresses on that and the loopbacks, that is it. So with that, let's go and configure our basic OSPF within the core. So we're on provider edge two, this one here. We're going to do a configure tip, or rather enable first. We'll do a configure terminal, we'll do a do show IP root connected. I'm going to do router OSPF1. We'll do a router ID of all the twos. We'll do a network of 10.0.0.0. And we're going to put every single instance of OSPF in area zero here. The next one we'll do is the actual loopback. Important to advertise that. And that is going to be the start of that. Now go on to the next one. Enable configure terminal do show IP root connected router OSPF1. Again, that doesn't need to match just for kind of posterity because I'll be using different instances later on. Just to keep it straight in your head, I'm going to match everyone with router OSPF1. Okay, so we'll use the router ID will be all the fours this time to match the router number four. We'll use the network will be and we should establish our adjacency. And we'll put all the fours on this. That's OSPF adjacency popped up. Okay, so now if we do a show IP route, we should see all the twos. There we go. And that's router twos look back. Let's move on to router five. Enable configure terminal and we'll do a do show IP routes connected router OSPF1 and we'll use the router ID of all the fives this time. We'll do a network of 10.0.0.4. Same wildcard mask, it's all slash 30s, so it's simple enough. And we'll just up arrow that, make that an 8, and we'll also pop in the loop back, of course. I really should have put on uh, login synchronous to stop these annoying messages, <laughs> but a bit late now. And we're on to router 6. So enable configure terminal to show IP route connected, router OSPF 1. And we'll use the router ID of all the 6s in this one. Same format. And we'll do a 10.0.0.8. Again, slash 30, wildcard mask going to be the same. And we'll arrow up and make that a 12 now. And adjacency should be popping up any moment from the first one. And we'll advertise our loopback. There we go. And the last one, we are going to 
Just for posterity, remember, we're actually just doing OSPF on the inside. We're not going to be advertising this network and this and this and this in this case. We will be advertising the loopback source, remember them. So we'll do enable configure terminal, do show IP root connected, and we'll do it up. All the sevens. And we'll do it. So that's our adjacency. So we now should be able to see all the twos, i.e. the loop back of the other edge. So let's just see if that's the case. Yep. And of course we always test connectivity. And that's it. Okay, so now we've configured the basic OSPF interior gateway routing protocol within the core. The next thing we need to implement is MPLS. Now the way MPLS is going to work, essentially will have MPLS activated on this inbound interface, on both of these interfaces, both of these, both of these, and just on this inbound. So it's basically facing into the network, into the network, but not configured externally. So it's just gonna be within the ISP core, okay? So let's start and do this. Now, if you've never seen MPLS configured before, it might sound intimidating. I know it's kind of a, think oh that sounds like kind of the scary complex stuff it really isn't you'll see what I mean simple command MPLS IP we're going to use MPLS label protocol and we're going to have dynamic discovery so rather than setting up static we're going to use LDP so remember that MPLS IP MPLS label protocol LDP and from that point all you need to do is go into the interface which you want to configure for MPLS and deploy MPLS IP so int gig 00 and we're going to use MPLS IP that was it, simple as that. We go to router four, we'll do the same, but on both interfaces this time, and you'll see the adjacency will come up, or rather neighbor relationship, should I say. MPLS, ah, oh, MPLS IP, and we'll have label protocol, we'll use LDP again. We'll go into the interface, gigabit zero zero, and you'll see we'll have a neighbor relationship pop up here. There we go. And similarly, we'll go into gigabit 01 and we'll do MPLS IP for that one. Okay, let's go to router five. And same again, conf t, MPLS IP, MPLS, and we'll do label protocol, LDP, same old. Gigabit 01, we'll have our neighbor relationship pop up. There we go and gigabit zero zero MPLS IP. Let's move to the side, router six now, this one here. And there we go. MPLS IP, MPLS label protocol, LDP, interface gigabit zero zero MPLS IP. There we go. And interface gigabit zero one. MPLS IP and the final one remember we're only configuring it on the inbound interface and by inbound I mean inward facing towards the ISP core so last one conf t MPLS IP M oh, <laughs> MPLS I've said before when I record these videos I use a USB keyboard and it always messes me up my typing is always terrible on it um, MPLS label protocol LDP and int gig 01 this time, just 01, and we should establish our last neighbor relationship. Okay, that's us. So now, like I say, we can ping to, or rather, cancel you, ping to all the twos. And if we also trace to all the twos, you should see the MPLS labels. May take a bit of time, but see that's the labels coming through.
Okay, we get the gist of that. Good. Okay, now what we also want to do is we want to actually stop these routers, the edge routers, the provider edge routers, sorry, from propagating their time to lives. We don't want that to be available for anyone pinging through here to be able to see the interior of the network. So what we're going to do is go on to those particularly, in this case, the edge one here. And we're going to do no MPLS. And I believe it will be label, oh, no, sorry, LDP rather. And it's going to be, oh, wait, no, it's a different one. Done the wrong configuration. LDP, where is that? Oh, IP, there we go, IP. And TTL, or propagate TTL. That's what I was looking for, getting myself mixed up there. And same again on this one here, router seven. We're going to do the same old no MPLS IP propagate TTL. We don't want that. So that's that. Okay, doc. So that's that configured. I think we'll leave this for part one. Don't want to make the video too long. The next thing we'll do will be to configure VRFs on this interface. This interface we'll have keep them simple and be called as VRF blue so it's easy to visually see it, VRF, VRF red, VRF blue, VRF red and we'll go through the process of that. Afterwards we'll configure um, BGP between these two routers and after that we'll start doing our OSPF and then our redistribution and see if we have connectivity between the sites. So let's just pause the video here and I'll be back in two seconds.